Hello, what's up guys, and welcome to Should You Play Black Guards 2. Now if you've been following this channel you'll know that I did do a preview of this game about a month and a half ago, just before release. So essentially this is obviously just going to be adding on to that and actually determining with the finished product whether you should be playing Black Guards 2. But if you do want to know more about um, the game then I'll leave the, well, the link to that in the description below and then you can get some earlier impressions of the game at obviously an earlier point in the game. So this is about five hours in and what Black Guards 2 is, if you're actually wondering, it's a strategy RPG. So you have this main character Cassia and then you have to take her through the story. Now the difference between this and then something very similar is the fact that actually this does kind of stamp something unique um, I would say in the market and I haven't really played a game like this before. Obviously I've played plenty of RPGs and plenty of strategy turn based RPGs but not anything really like this before and you do actually have to think about how you're going to progress through the game. So at the moment I have just completed a mission and then I had to go through a portal and then I've just en entered this world and then there are these things that look like they're going to be killing me in the not so distant future unless I can stop that. Uh, the game should be running at a good solid 60 frames a second but I've just noticed it has dropped slightly um, just below 50 if you're wondering uh, why you're getting some sort of jagginess in the video. Um, the game is pretty easy to run I went through the options menu in the initial first impressions that I did before the game was released I will go through them again at the end of the game uh, but it seems that it's quite an easy game to run although the physics based um, system on these enemies here seem to be upsetting that slightly. Um, so, I will start just by saying that I didn't really play this game much after the first video I did. Um, that was mainly because this it wasn't a finished game back then. That was literally um, like a pre-release sort of preview sort of thing. Um, but I think that's kind of the overall impression I have of the game. And in a nutshell, I have definitely been enjoying the game whenever I get uh, my hands on it. But it's not one of those games that I can, uh, I'm thinking, uh, thinking to myself about throughout the day um, that I must go and play this game. It's kind of a good thing to play, but it doesn't have this sort of thing that I would say makes a great game, which is where um, you're thinking about it and you know that I want to make some time and go and play this. Well, that I want to go and play this game. Uh, frames a second really starting to drop now. That's interesting. That has not happened before. I have no idea how I'm going to kill four of these guys. I literally have no idea whatsoever. I'll give it a go. Right. Um, so we have our main character here, Cassia, and she is slightly adaptable. You can make a, a melee person, a mage person, or whatever you want to do. Uh, this guy here is another mage, and then he, the dwarf over there, is a solid uh, melee type guy. And then you can also get mercenaries that follow you about as well, and then you can have them as mage archers or um, mage archers or melee guys depending, depending on what you like to play. I've no idea how I'm going to kill all these guys. Um, I've fully upgraded her spell so she should be able to do a lot of damage um, but unfortunately my guy is in the way so that's not really going to help me there. Um, the system is that you can move similar to what you can do in some other games. You can move sort of halfway like you can in XCOM um, and then you can attack or you can take if you like two half turns and move but not attack. And so we have played XCOM, Enemy Unknown, you'll kind of know that sort of system. Alright, there we go. Now this should do a lot of damage. Well, it killed one of them. I oh, know it didn't. It just weakened. Oh no, it did kill one of them. How about that? I didn't expect that to happen. So this is our little combat wheel. So you can see here that if we had a belt on, uh, we could use some items that we had with us, like various potions and stuff. We can pick them up. Um, at various different points throughout the game, through stores. I, have, I don't really think there's a crafting system or anything like that, but Die! I don't really think the game needs that. Um, I'll get onto it properly uh, when it next comes up, but by far the best thing about this game is actually the voice acting in the game. I think that's superb and the way everything... Only in theory. Only in theory. That's not a real concept. Okay, and he seems to be healing them up, which is slightly unfair, but okay. They're not that strong, so I should be able to take them out fairly easily. 
If you're wondering what sort of graphics card you should need to run this game, I would recommend anything really. Um, just like a any sort of modern card, like 750 and up, 750 Ti and up, really. Um, obviously, this is at maximum settings, and you can lower them down. They've got a lot of hornet's nest you can take out. Let's have a look. Let's think about this carefully. Uh, you have like a sort of manner, it's called Astral Energy, you can see these bars at the bottom uh, that actually will show you uh, what sort of spells and stuff you actually have enough energy for um, to do. And once we run out of that, Endurance is for melee people, so like your melee special attacks, and then um, you just can do basic attacks that won't use either. Uh, how, much, how much health does he have? And you can level up your character in other ways as well, not just through combat. So you can see that um, it tells you here the stats of our guys, but it doesn't tell you the stats of their guys. But if you actually level up your character, you can get almost like an intuition sort of system where depending on the type of creature you want to be able to tell what it is, you could actually find out everything about these creatures and then you could um, be a bit more tactical about how you're going to take them out, find out their weaknesses and how much, uh, well, how much energy and things like that they actually have left. Um, let's have a look. So that one's got full health, that one's got half, so we'll take out this one. I uh, didn't quite manage to actually take him out. Um, let's have a look. Power blow on him. Uh, once your character dies, it seems that, unless all your character dies, as far as I can tell, this could be wrong, um, then you. You, if your character dies, you do get them back at the end of the game, um, as soon as you finish that level. Um, but if you lose all your guys, then obviously you have to start again. So let's try and take this guy out. Have a look. Come a look, son. We'll drink oh, you. I've been poisoned. So these guys are now dead. Um, <laughs> uh, but you have. But you will get them back at the end of the game. But it seems like I won't actually get there, to be perfectly honest, at the moment. Um, this seems like a little bit unfair, to be perfectly honest. It's not just offensive spells you can cast, though. We've got um, some defensive spells we can use as well. Uh, but so he's got some offensive spells. He can, uh, defensive spells, sorry, he can use. So, what can we do? Can't really do much, we've used up most of our energy now. Um, none of them really are that weak either. Which is just brilliant. I don't know what that is. Is that just a tree? Brilliant. What a waste of time that was. Uh, she's got no energy left either. Again, brilliant. That's not going to do anything. Wow. Well, this is... This is a uh, GG, to be perfectly honest. Attack him. Please, poison. Please, poison. So, what else about the game? Well, there are plenty of levels. Um, you have like a hub sort of world that we will get onto again after this level, and there seems to be like there's quite a lot of levels you can actually go and play. Obviously, like I say, this is only about five hours in, and it seems like I'm maybe about a third of the way into the game. Uh, the story actually is quite deep, and although it is very easy to skip some of the cutscenes and stuff, if you um, if you click, you can actually get through the text uh, like that. But the the, vo the story and the voice acting, I would say, are actually one of the best things about this game. For a game that, while it's not as AAA as you get, and a game that only costs um, 23.99 and Great British pounds at the time or filming on Steam, I think they've done a good job of actually of clearly using the resource if they, resources they've got to create quite an immersive um, story filled game actually. Regular attack. Wow, that really did lots. Well, I think I'm going to die here. I definitely think I'm going to die. <laughs> Maybe I'll have to revisit this ah, level a bit later. Because yeah. uh, she's now on three. And she was on full health before, so... Yeah. Maybe I was supposed to take him out. That was probably what I was supposed to do. And I completely did it wrong. <gasps> and he's dead. And there is literally no chance of me completing this level. Literally no chance. But, rather than restart the recording and start again, uh, this is the sort of stuff I think you should be seeing, rather than... I'm um, just seeing people doing it professionally well. 
This is this is realistic. This there's no chance, no chance. Wonder if I can. I'll use a potion. How about that? Yes, on yourself. Poison. How insidious. And he's just hit, like healing them up anyway. So clearly he's the guy I have to kill, and clearly I did this completely wrong. But you learn from your mistakes. That's why they put erasers on pencils, right? There's quite a lot of customizability as well. Your characters have different weapons and armor that you find throughout the game. Uh, you can loot chests as well uh, that you'll find throughout the game. And then you can... Poison. Okay, well that's the end of that. Game over. Uh, let's load the latest auto save. Is that today? No, this one's today. So we'll load this one, but then I'll just save it and I'll actually load a little bit back so I can show you uh, what the hub world is like. Had the house and, and you see this is the story, so I'll actually just let this play. Nor his melody of creation could be found. And so, together with her closest allies, she went through the dimensional portal. So that's our little voiceover guy anyway. Right, I'll try the level again a bit later. Oh, sorry, I shouldn't have skipped that. Yeah, um, so you get proper cutscenes that are like those book-like features that we saw. You don't tend to get any, well, that, as far as I can tell and as far as that I have seen. Um, you don't actually get any, this better not override it, that would be pretty sad. Um, but you don't actually get any uh, sort of cutscenes that traditionally where they're right up close and what you're used to, um, you get cutscenes that are in like the book form, like a storybook, which which I quite like, and it does again make the game stand out. Um, I think the most important thing to kind of say, really, though, that as I haven't played the original Blackguards, I am a noob when it comes to the Blackguard series, so I can't really comment on how different it is um, from the original Blackguards. From what I've heard, though, it, I've heard it hasn't been that different. But I think if you want a detailed opinion on that, you'll have to go somewhere else. So you can talk to all the characters. You can see all the characters here. Um, a little bit of the backstory is basically that Cassia was... In, I'm not sure if you, she was... I think she was wrongly imprisoned. But anyway, she was imprisoned and went mad over a couple of years and then used that time to kind of learn some magic and some spells. And then now she just wants to rule the world, is essentially what has happened. Um, so we can talk to our guys at the home world. We can talk to our mercenaries and actually level them up. Like so. You think you need a certain amount of XP or something to do that, um, which it doesn't seem that we have. Coming out of that, we can level up our character from the character sheet, which is here. And so you can see we can specialize in different weapons. Um, we can specialize in different talents. So this is what I was talking about earlier. If we level these things up, then we can actually um, detect our enemies' stats. So things like... Um, health, endurance, and then their astral energy, as well as other weaknesses and things like that. Um, spells, there are quite a lot of spells you can learn and level up. I think you have to go and see a certain mage uh, to level up. Um, and Well, you can level them up, but you need to go and speak to a mage to actually uh, learn new spells. So you can see there are quite a lot of things here to do and to level up. If you're not a mage, then you can't become a mage, uh, but your main character starts off as a mage, if that makes sense. So like the dwarf, Yorim, if that's how you say it. Um, he can't actually learn any spells, so you have to level them up in different ways. Uh, special maneuvers, though, um, everyone can learn these, and these are unique uh, to the class. So if you want to be doing different melee stuff, then your different melee stuff here is here, and then range stuff is there, and then you've got special abilities as well that will just. That's essentially just leveling up your character, so things like health, um, astral energy, just things like that. If we go into our inventory though, you can see the inventory system uh, where we have our nice Cassia character here. Uh, she's got this unique helmet and stuff on that shows hides her face because it's been bitten by spiders and it's horrible. Or thus, the, that's what the game wants you to know. Uh, but you see we've got different um, sets here of weapons. It takes one turn to switch between them, so you can't just quickly change between all your weapons. But if you want to change on the fly from a swordsman uh, to an archer, then you can do that. Um, new weapons and armor can be found here. You can get it from chests in game, you can get it from the end of levels, or you can buy it from the stores. 
Uh, so you can see that here are all our different characters, and you'll find new characters uh, throughout the game, I believe. Um, other than that, uh, we've got our little map, or the world map, where we can go to different places. I'll show you that properly in a moment. Um, tutorial, if we forget anything. But then this is the options menu I was talking to you about earlier. Um, the game does look pretty good for what it is. Like I say, it's quite easy to run. I would say it's almost like Dota 2 sort of level of graphics, so it's not really that intense. And of course you can turn things down if you want to. Um, the only thing I guess I would maybe change about the game is a better anti-aliasing technique. At the moment we've only got on or off. And it doesn't really do a brilliant job of anti-aliasing in certain bits of the game. It's not too bad now. It's, I'd say it's fine now. Um, but I have found that it has not an issue, but you see things like this here. I don't know how well that will translate into the actual game um, video. Uh, is basically, we can see some obvious ali aliasing here, and it looks like we've got stuff going down this log, so that doesn't look very great. Um, but yeah, there's not really that much else to talk about, um, other than if we go out of here... Um, you can see for the first time in years, uh, this is like the story interface. But not for her so it's like we're reading a book. She was afraid because she could not remember Mirai's face. Somewhere inside her, I can't skip that, dark, so I let it play. And she could feel it growing. And then this is our character selection screen. So certain levels uh, will actually require you to take different people. Some will require one hero, some will require all the heroes, some will require no heroes and just mercenaries. So if we like having our archers with us, which I do, I'll take two archers with us. Click done and that is our character selection. And then when we start a level we place our characters. Although it's turn based, it, the way it works is that you all have different yes. speeds and then depending on your character's speed uh, it depends who will go first. So, our dwarf is the slowest, he will go last, and then uh, quickest is this guy here, our ex slave Takati, or Takati. And so, that is basically how it works. So, if you want to get ahead, you need better speed, and you can't. Uh, if you can block off other characters, so if I go and stand here, if I had an archer, well, where the archer is now, because of where I'm positioned, he wouldn't be able to attack this guy. So you've got to think tactically about where you want to position your guys. And then you use the wheel to determine what effects you want to do and what abilities you want to use. And that actually is pretty much all there is to say about the game. It's got a decent enough story, and one that I have been enjoying. And the gameplay plays pretty well, I haven't encountered any bugs or anything like that. Um, I've had one issue where I couldn't find a guy because he was somewhere else because the camera didn't also zoom on him. Uh, that was the only issue I've actually had with this game. Um, yeah, so it plays well, combat's good, no bugs, story's pretty good, graphics for what they are are pretty good. Um, so it's the greatest game ever, right? Um, no. And I think the main reason um, that it is. It, I do recommend this game. If this is your sort of thing, then yes, I do recommend it. I think, just for me, it doesn't entice me to play it. It doesn't have that thing that makes me think, I want to go and play this. And that is something that is very hard for games to pull off, certainly. I mean, um, one of the games that I've played the most uh, was Smite. Uh, I haven't played that for quite a while now. But the thing about that, even though it was somewhat basic in the fact that well, like any sort of um, MOBA game, it's just got something about it that keeps you coming back and wanting to play the game. Whereas for me, personally, I don't so much get it with this game. But other than that, on a technical level, on an actual fun level, um, it rates pretty well with me and I don't really have much fault with it. Like I say, if you want to know some more impressions that I got from this particular um, game, then you can check out the preview I did about a month and a half ago at the time of filming. Um, in the description below. But that is pretty much all I've got to say. If you're wondering, should you play Black Cards 2? If you want a game that is maybe slightly cheaper, although it's obviously it's just come out, then this is a game for you. If you want a game that actually will last a fair amount of time, then this is definitely a game for you. If you like a strategy RPG uh, turn-based game, this is for you. And obviously if you don't like those things, then this probably isn't for you. Thank you so much for checking out this video. If you like this video, obviously give it a like. If you didn't, 
then don't give it a like or give it a dislike depending on what you think. Leave a comment below, let me know what you thought of this video and if you want more videos like this and others on PCs, gaming and technology then of course don't forget to subscribe to PC Centric for more videos like this. Thank you so much for watching, if you want to know anything else about this game and you want a very quick reply then Twitter is the best place to get me and that is at PC Centric and then I will pretty much reply as soon as I can, as soon as I get the message, as long as I'm not really busy for whatever reason. Targeted shot, 100% chance, there we go, look at that, damage. 8 damage, how about that? So yeah, thank you so much for checking out this video as I said, and I will see you in the next one.